Welcome back to Mesod, Thailand. I'm on the scooter, of course. Just heading out for a little bit of a exploration of Mesod. There's a couple of places here I've always wanted to visit, but I've never gotten around to. One of them is a guest house called the Picture Book Guest House. Google Maps calls it an unpretentious B&B. Looks like an interesting place, bit of a garden setting out back, I think. And I thought I'd go there to uh, check it out. And one other place is a coffee shop called the Foresta Cafe and Hangout. And it's a little bit outside of Mesod, just outside the city edges, and you can get there by highway but uh, you can also get there through some country roads, I guess. I'm not going to follow the highway. That's a much faster, more direct route, but I'm just going to try and get there through some small country roads. Uh, the route I've picked out takes me past this little pond, a lake, or maybe a water reservoir for the city. I'm not sure, but we'll see, uh, we'll see how I can get there. First stop is the uh, Picture Book Guest House. It's pretty early actually for visiting a guest house. It's just past nine o'clock in the morning, but hopefully they're uh, going to be open. Crazy thing, it is cold here in Thailand. Certainly here in Mesot, it feels uh, I guess this is Thailand's winter. Could really feel it last night, even inside my room at the Green Guest House. Very, very cold. For me, of course, it doesn't bother me at all. Being a Canadian, of course, but I think for a lot of uh, Thai people, they would consider this to be extremely cold. Looking around me, all the people I see are bundled up in a lot of layers of jackets and scarves and gloves, things like that. The other wrinkle, by the way, is that here in Thailand, and in Mesot in particular, we're still in a kind of lockdown. I don't know all the rules and restrictions for this lockdown beyond the, the obvious ones that we always uh, face. So I'm not entirely sure the Foresta Cafe and Hangout will be open for sit down, have a cup of coffee experience. I'm not sure. I'll just have to... I, I sent them a message, but I didn't get a reply. So I don't know whether they're open or not. It might be only for uh, takeaway, but I'm going to head there anyway and uh, see what happens. It's always nice to have a destination for a little scooter journey. Part of the lockdown. I think all the schools are closed. I just passed a big school there and at this time of the morning I think it would normally be full of students but right now it's uh, completely empty. Nothing going on there.
wasn't easy to find the uh, street, the turnoff. There's the sign for the place, the picture book guest house, 50 meters ahead. Okay, turn right just ahead and then 50 meters down that road. And it looks like they're on WhatsApp, Facebook, Line, Instagram, all those sorts of things. I wonder if we'll see another sign up here where to turn. Ah, there is too. There it is right up ahead. <clears throat> turn right, then 30 meters. Ah, nice quiet road to go down. Here we are. Ah, check that out. Very much a garden setting, right from the uh, right from the front. That looks like uh, the check-in to my left, and I guess these are some of the rooms over here. Maybe this is a customer parking here, so I will put my scooter here. So there's the main building, I think, for all the rooms. And I've got my scooter parked here just around the corner. Whoa. <laughs> Neighborhood pooch snuck up, <laughs> snuck up behind me. I already saw the staff here come running out and they uh, chased that dog actually, that white and brown one. They chased him away. So I think they've got a lot of big uh, neighborhood dogs here. Yeah, it's a little bit of a garden style entrance, which is nice. Oh, I like that, uh, I like that table or a series of four tables, different heights. And all these rooms have a little stool and a chair in front, and the ones up top have the same thing, but with the uh, balconies. That's kind of nice. And this looks like the uh, entrance. Got a sign-in form. We'll do that. gonna go uh, take a look at the inside of one of the rooms oh they have another area back here for seating kind of a cement uh, oh and there's my uh, canal system back there the uh, the river going through uh, Mesot go uh, check that out in a minute ah, there it is over there you can just uh, see it uh, I remember walking by here actually and noticing like I, I kind of like the barbed wire along the side and I was wondering whether guests would have access to the canal system. Maybe they do somewhere, but I don't know. Okay. So here's one of the rooms. It has uh, two twin beds. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Canada, a giant map of uh, Canada on the wall. And my home is down here in the southern part of Canada. This is the uh, Great Lakes District, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron. And my home is right there, Sarnia, right on uh, Lake Huron, down at the bottom of Lake Huron. There's Toronto, of course. It's always funny when you look at maps of Canada because that looks so close from Sarnia to Toronto, but that's about a four hour drive on a, like a big highway to get to Toronto from Sarnia. So it's still 
even that short distance is a long ways away. And there's the other side of the room, little table or desk, I should say, TV, mini fridge, and some hangers and uh, bookshelves. And of course, the room has its own uh, bathroom. Hot water, electric uh, heater. Take a look at the uh, the view from this room. Oh, there's the uh, okay. There's the balcony. They have a nice garden atmosphere. The seating up on the balcony, a couple of chairs and a table. So it's not a big place, of course, but they've definitely made an effort to uh, establish, a, like I said, a garden setting. A lot of trees planted there, which is kind of nice. And they have it nicely separated from the next balcony, so. You could chat with your neighbors through that wall, but uh, they wouldn't be able to see you that easily. It's kind of a nice touch. I just noticed that those curtains are actually quite thick. So oh, I wouldn't call them blackout curtains, but I'm a, I have a lot of trouble sleeping. So I always appreciate it when they have um, like really thick curtains to keep the light out. It just makes it a lot easier to uh, sleep. And I assume this room has a uh, air conditioning. Yeah, it does air conditioning above the door there, and a fan. I always like that when you have both of them, then you can choose which one you want to use. Quite often, aircon rooms have only air conditioning, but then if you turn off the air conditioner, it's way too hot. But with it on, maybe it's way too cold. It's hard to get a balance, but it's nice to be able to turn off the air conditioner and then just have a, a fan going to cool it down just enough to make it comfortable. But yeah, there's the room. Well, the rooms have different names. That is the flying room. And ah, treetop room. Treetop room. Oh, here's another room, and this one has the uh, a single double or a queen size bed. There's the balcony. This time though, the curtains are open, so you get all the light pouring in. And so I guess you get morning light in these rooms. And the decor in this room is pretty much identical. You wouldn't even know you were in a different room <laughs> except for the yeah, different bed and then uh, different art on the wall here. And uh, I was wondering about the book part of things. Picture book is their name, whether they kind of had an emphasis on uh, reading or in literature. And there are a few books here inside this room. Ah, oh, okay, this was the uh, first room that I looked at, and it was called the Map Room. So it had the map of Canada in it. Maybe they change the map from time to time. <laughs> Perhaps you get a different country every week. And I noticed they had a big book in there with a lot of history of this place. So I asked them if I could take it out of the room for a few minutes, and I'll go have a cup of coffee and uh, read through the book. Anyway, they were going to show me one more room here down at the bottom. So these were all the uh, upstairs rooms. So I want to take a look at a room on the, uh, the ground floor. Oh, 
Yeah, and these actually have a nice uh, atmosphere too because you get the sort of the ground level sense of the, the garden setting, which is nice. So you have your own little sidewalk leading up to the outside of your room. Okay. Again, uh, same, or I would call it identical decor from upstairs. This room also has a, a queen size or double bed. standard but quite nice. I just spoke to the front desk and right now there's kind of a discount going on. It's uh, 600 baht per night for the deluxe room and 500 baht per night for regular. I'm not sure which was deluxe and which was regular because they all kind of look the same to me but uh, perhaps the ones upstairs and downstairs are the two different prices, I'm not sure. Unfortunately, because of the, the lockdown, they don't have any kind of a uh, restaurant or cafe operational right now. So I was going to sit down and have a cup of coffee here and relax for a few minutes, but alas, no coffee. And they have some kind of a separate building back here. I've noticed in photographs online, it looked like they hosted events of different kinds. So I think you can rent or use this space for your organization if you come here for a conference or uh, something like that. And there's the main uh, guest room building again. And this is what I mentioned earlier. This is the, uh, the walkway that goes by the canal system here in Mesot, which you think is kind of a nice thing for a location for a guest house to be beside a, a river or canal system, but doesn't uh, this canal system in Mesa wasn't developed to be a kind of place where people can relax and go for walks. I think it's meant it's more utilitarian than that. So even here, it's uh, completely blocked off with a uh, barbed wire. There's no access to go out there. Probably mainly to keep people from out there coming in here, probably uh, security reasons. Oh, and it looks like they have um, parking back here for scooters. I didn't see that. Ah, I see. So if I had driven a little bit further, I would have found this entrance here. It's just sort of a more narrow uh, space for parking scooters and bicycles. And possibly these bicycles are for guests to use or rent. I'm not sure. And there's the... Uh, the back side of the building. So oh, I'm just going to uh, take a seat, probably out in that little uh, interesting area at the front and read through the book. I think it's kind of a guide uh, to Mesot, but we'll uh, see, see what's in here. Here it is here, the uh, picture book and guest house booklet. <clears throat> Who we are. <clears throat> Boutique on a budget with a sustainable and socially responsible business model. Oh, the Picture Book Guest House is a social enterprise created by Youth Connect Foundation. Actually, I saw a, a, a sign uh, near the lobby for Youth Connect Foundation. I'm not sure what that is, though. We are a sustainable business created in response to the growing need for employment and employability of Mesot youth. So this reminds me a lot of uh, one of those cafes that I visited earlier, uh, Hebron. 
<clears throat> sort of a training center where they would take local youth and give them work, but also training in the hospitality industry. Maybe that is what is going on here. Hmm, yeah. We double as a customer service and hospitality training program. So while we provide you, our guest, with the comforts of home, you can take pride that the profits we make go directly into providing a rich training experience for our apprentices. So perhaps the young fellow showing me the rooms here was a, or is an apprentice. Ah, oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> so they have various partners in the area. So all of the items that we saw in the rooms, the pieces of art and, and the decor, everything I noted seemed to be roughly the same from room to room, um, seems to come from other programs or organizations with similar interests and similar uh, uh, philosophies. So it says that from the sand blasted glass windows to the towel rack, the room in which you are staying contains one of a kind artwork elements created in partnership with Youth Connect Foundation's sister social enterprises. So I guess all these other places also have a dual function, their apprenticeship and training programs for youth to learn from professionals. So they list a bunch of some of them here, the Ironwood Furniture Studio. And I guess apprentices train with local carpenters for building uh, furniture in a sustainable fashion, of course. The Puzzle Box Arts Studio trains apprentices in a variety of artistic styles and skill sets, ranging from basic drawing to ceramics to batik to sandblasting. The Two Wheels Bike Shop, which normally focuses on apprenticeships in mechanics, bicycle repair, and the creation of three-wheeled bikes for people with physical disabilities. Finally, the garden, where we are now. The garden itself was planned and designed by a team comprised of former YCF staff, including Youth Connect founder Patrick Kearns. To sum it all up, every aspect of the picture book is singularly handmade, but also represents a part of a multi-storied participatory community-based production model. So that's the basic idea of uh, the picture book guest house. Ah, and at the very end of this uh, booklet, they have a list of all the different rooms because each one has a theme, I guess. There is the writer's room, the Zen room, the naturalist room, the treetop room, the room on the moon, the map room, the room by the sea, the flying room, and once upon a room. And each one has a, a different theme, I guess. So I think that is about it for my visit to the uh, picture book guest house. I'm going to just hang out here for a couple of minutes and do a map check to figure out how I'm going to drive from here to where the Foresta Cafe and Hangout is located. As I said, uh, I don't have a lot of faith that it's going to be open, but it'll be fun just to drive there anyway. And even if it's not open, maybe there's takeaway. We'll find out. Maybe there will be a, a cup of coffee at the end of this trip for me after all. I'm on my way to the Forresta Cafe and Hangout. It'll likely be a, a relatively slow process. As I said, I'm going to try to follow some smaller roads through the countryside. It's going to take me past some kind of a lake or pond or water reservoir. And it looks like I'll be going by another resort, uh, someplace called the Watana Resort. And I might uh, pop in there as well if, uh, if I happen to pass by it and it looks interesting.
as I said, I could go to the Forresta Cafe and hang out down the highway, and I could be there in three or four minutes if I knew the route, but I thought I would follow some smaller roads if I can, make a little bit of a journey out of it. into a bit of a highway barrier as often happens. I want to cross this road. It continues on the other side. Oh, you turn. It's one thing you learn in Thailand when you're on a scooter and you learn very quickly the art of the U-turn how you deal with all the, uh, the one-way streets. One-way streets and uh, divided highways. Well, I'm not quite sure of where I am, but I think the reservoir that I'm looking for is on the other side of this embankment ahead of me. At first I thought it was a highway, but there's no highway over there that I'm aware of. Oh, <laughs> there's supposed to be a road here. But I don't see much of a road. Let's see how far, how far we can go along here. Maybe I'll climb up to the top of this embankment and see if that's the uh, reservoir that I'm looking for. stop here and uh, climb up there and take a look. Okay, park the scooter here on this path and uh, the embankment is just ahead of me there. <gasps> yeah, it has to be the reservoir up there. And there's the embankment, so let's Climb up here and uh, take a look around. And while I was driving around here, I spotted a pagoda on top of a hill. That looked like it might be interesting to go up there just to get a bit of height to take a look around this area. But as I was driving along, I kind of lost sight of it. I don't know where it is anymore. Oh, 
Ah, there we are. Huh. And there's a road up here. So there is a road and a reservoir. Oh, and there's the uh, pagoda I was talking about right up there. Huh. How in the world do you get there? Because I've noticed this road is looking a little bit official. There's a gate at the end there. The gate is open. But anyway, I can't get up here on the scooter anyway. I'm gonna have to find another way around. Uh, this is the uh, scenery around me right now. That's Mesot over there. And the countryside. The reservoir strikes me as natural and perhaps also a bit man-made. This side looks like it's been built up with rocks and dirt. And uh, the other side looks a little bit more natural. So maybe there was a, a natural pond here and then they uh, built it up to contain more water. Looks pretty low right now. I imagine it could be a lot fuller than this, but it is kind of the, uh, the dry season right now. But now that I see that pagoda over there, I, I don't think I would get much of a, a view of this area, but we'll see. If I see a road going up there easily, I'll go check it out, but I'm not gonna make a big effort to get up there. For now, I have to figure out how to get forward from here, where my scooter is parked down there. I'm not sure if uh, this road will get me out. Yeah, I might be able to. Looks like it curves around that way, and then I can hook up with another road heading up. That's what I'll try first anyway. First, I have to make it down this embankment without slipping and sliding. There we are. And there's uh, Armando working hard down here on the foot peg. I'm still having trouble with my uh, current setup and getting it level and pointed in the right direction. I haven't gotten around to buying anything better than what I have. So I think if I go this direction, I can hang a left, then a right, then a left, and then I'll be on a road that will take me to the Watana Village Resort, and then after that to the Foresta, Foresta Cafe and Hangout. But we'll have to see. May or may not work out. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Not sure if I'm heading towards a road or towards a private property. It's not quite where I thought I would end up, but I think I can keep going. Huh. <laughs> I definitely didn't see this on, uh, on my map. But I think I'm still heading more or less in the right direction. A lot of big dogs around here. Now, this looks like a map check time. 
Okay, it looks like I can go left here and then left again and then I should be on the road I'm looking for. Gotta get up this hill. Something big and official on the left here, some kind of government something. Mobile development unit. 33rd Regional Development Office. Man, whatever they do, whatever they develop, could be infrastructure. There's a whole bunch of trucks off to the right there. And there's the Watana village. I didn't set out looking for this place this morning, but it wasn't my plan to come here. But I noticed that this uh, resort hotel was on the way to the Foresta Cafe. So I figured I'd just pop inside for a quick look around. Looks like an interesting place. They have a, a swimming pool off to the right, and I saw a pond of some kind. Yeah, it looks very much like it's laid out like a, kind of like a rural village. I assume you can rent these bungalows ahead of me. They look quite large, actually. Oh, interesting. A whole bunch of them kind of a-frame structures over here with the, each one has a little carport that's kind of cool i've always liked a-frames because they're in theory anyway if you look at them they just look so simple to build you just build a uh you know, like here's one right here it doesn't seem to be occupied but there's a little a-frame a structure for the garage port and then another one for the cottage on the right. And there's one uh, right there. So there's part of the, uh, the bedroom area and bathroom probably in there. Yeah, just looks like a nice little, nice little cottage. Got moss growing on the shingles. And these ones over here look a bit newer perhaps, a bit simpler brick construction still has the a-frame style for the carport and then, yeah more of a rounded cottage look yeah, there's a whole row of them here quite nice they're all facing the morning sun just popped off the scooter for a second thought I'd there's a little path right here goes down to the the side of this little lake and I think they have a couple of cottages over top of the lake thought I'd take a look at those and there are the uh, the a-frames around me you can see them in the, the background there and just over here through the trees there's a little pond a little lake Wanted to walk down to the edge of the water, see what was going on here. Oh, nice. 
oh, over there on the right, you can see one of the, the larger buildings, a little cottage I assume you can rent on stilts right out over the water. And uh, this one over there as well. A couple more beyond it and I can see one more over there and this one here. Hmm, nice. I was just passing by the swimming pool, so I thought I'd uh, take a quick look at the swimming pool. Looks to be in good condition anyway. Looks like it's well maintained. Nobody uh, swimming right now, but now yeah, the water looks clean and fresh. Looks to have uh, showers changing rooms over here, or maybe it's just a bathroom. I suppose you can always shower back at your own cottage if you wanted to, but no. Yeah, they have uh, showers here. And these are my kind of chairs right here. What do you call these? Uh, chaise lounge, just to sprawl out and read a book with a cold drink. That would be very nice. Seems to be more going on back here along this footpath. It does have a nice setting. Very natural. This is really nice. Looks like they have a, an area built out over the pond. Looks like they could hold events out there, set up tables. They've got a stage there at the end. Yeah, that's quite nice. So I guess they could hold events here and conferences, anything like that. Oh, so here's the, uh, the restaurant. And one of the staff came to talk to me and she said that they have meeting rooms here. So there's one over there and then uh, two more. Yeah, another meeting room here and one more over there. So I think they have large conferences here. And big events, things like that. Ah, she just went to uh, get a drink for me. Number to the phone. There's that outdoor area again. Just sat down for a second here to relax and uh, they brought me a bottle of ice cold water and a name card for this place. So you can see the name and uh, contact number. 
the woman who came out to speak with me. She didn't speak English, but she put me on the phone with her boss, and I talked to him over the phone. And he told me a bit about this place and was wondering whether I was looking for a room here for tonight or for how long. And I just told him I, I was driving by and I just happened to see the sign. So I popped in to take a look around. Yeah, the Wat Watana Village Resort. Yeah, very pleasant place. I like it here a lot. Very quiet and a lot of, uh, a lot of elbow room, a lot of space here, which is nice. I don't think I'll end up getting a look inside one of the uh, A-frames or anything like that, but that's no, okay. Just seeing the grounds gives me a pretty good idea of what this place is like. That's a nice view of the water here and some of the buildings where you can stay. I didn't find out what any of the room rates were, but if anyone wanted to stay here, I'm sure you can uh, find out what they are. Okay, my scooter waiting patiently for me. Time to, time to hit the road. Next stop, the Foresta Cafe and Hangout. And the big question of the day will finally be answered. Is the Foresta open? And can poor Doug get his morning cup of coffee finally? It's about three kilometers away. If I turn left at the road here, you can see the resort that I just visited behind me, just leaving the main grounds. looks like I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> I just drove by the place I'm looking for and it does have a nice friendly sign here that says open now for us to cafe and hangout but it looks like it's not only closed right now because of the current lockdown it looks like it's basically closed for the duration and there's the main coffee shop building but it looks to be kind of permanently closed there's a pond and more of the grounds over there. Hmm, that's unfortunate. So, if I'm looking for a morning cup of coffee, I'm going to have to go somewhere else, back into town. Maybe go to a spot that I know well. 
<laughs> one of my favorites from before. Back on the road. Leaving the closed Foresta. It's probably another victim of the pandemic or the shutdown of the economy due to the pandemic. It's unfortunate because it looks like kind of a new place. It probably opened not that long ago, just in time to be shut down. And there's another couple of coffee shops in town that I've always wanted to check out. So I'm gonna drive back into Mesa. And if I happen to pass by one of those places, I'll pop inside. I did say that if I saw an easy access to that pagoda, I would go take a look. And I think I just passed the uh, access road. So maybe I'll drive up there and take a look. Quick look, super quick look. like I can't go in anyway. Oh <laughs> uh, well. There's a sign here. And a gate says something important and I can't read any of it, but it does have the number 19 in it, which we can almost certainly guess means closed because of a uh, COVID-19. But I will, I think I'll just try to do a Google Translate on there, see whether it applies to uh, scooters and to uh, pedestrians, both. Oh. I did a Google Translate on the sign for the temple and it says pretty much what you'd expect it to say, that they are uh, uh, it says temporarily closed indefinitely to prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19. So there we are, back on the road, still on the hunt for my uh, coffee shop. <laughs> I think I'm right around the corner <clears throat> from the coffee shop I was thinking about. It's 
kind of a coffee shop restaurant combination, I think. I just happened to walk by it a couple of times before. I thought it looked interesting. And here it is right here. So I'm at the restaurant coffee shop. This is the uh, place right behind me. And uh, I haven't gone in yet, so I don't know whether there's uh, just takeaway service or not. Let's go find out. Ah, oh, there's the name of the place. I couldn't figure out what the name was, but it's uh, Adam Coffee. Slow Bar Coffee Drip. Oh, a couple of people are uh, sitting in there. So it looks like they do have um, dine-in service. Ah, so it's got a lot of the uh, classic uh, decor of a coffee shop. A lot of funky uh, teapots and uh, coffee pots, things like that. I ordered an iced cappuccino, and while I'm here, after my coffee, maybe I'll have something to eat. They have a, uh, yeah, lunch, lunch menu, pad thai, pad thai vermicelli, pad thai and fried mussels, pad thai with seafood. <laughs> uh, this entire menu is uh, pad thai, but they might have, uh, they might have some other things here as well. But first, I'm just going to uh, relax and uh, enjoy my iced cappuccino. And there's the entrance to the coffee shop restaurant again. She's busy making my iced cappuccino right now. And there's some of the other seating. And more seating behind me. And they have kind of an open air seating. There's no wall here. So it's not air conditioned inside. And there is quite a, a busy road uh, just, um, just to my right. And there it is over there. So it's not the quietest place to sit. Oh, my iced cappuccino has arrived. Not sure, uh, I have a whole lot to talk about this morning, just sort of hanging out in different places. Plus there's commercial radio playing, and uh, if it gets picked up on my microphone, ends up being a copyright problem. So I'm just gonna take a sip of this. Tell you that it tastes great, as always. And I did order a Pad Thai, so uh, Going to have a little little lunch snack here as well before I before I head out. My lunch has arrived, so I thought I'd just give you a quick look at my pad thai. There it is there, and it's yeah, very nicely served with a nice side dish here of some uh, veggies to go along with it. it smells great. Got some lime, uh, lime or lemon. My little salad here. And for the pad thai. Hmm. Served piping hot. Really like that. Fresh, uh, fresh off the stove.
very tasty. Mm. And I was really hungry too, so I, I needed something to eat. Anyway, just gonna settle in and enjoy my uh, pad thai. I'll check back in with you later. My lunch snack is done. The, the pad thai that I ordered cost uh, 35 baht, which is a pretty good deal, especially considering how good it was and the garnishings that came with it, all the bean sprouts and the other veggies. So that's what, a dollar, um, yeah, not much more than a dollar US. So it's, yeah, a pretty good deal for lunch. Anyway, time to uh, head back to the uh, guest house, relax there for a little bit. at the guest house that's the end of my morning adventures for for this morning <laughs> the goal all along was to go to the foresta cafe and hangout and i wasn't able to do that because it's not open at all before i left i was wondering whether they would have dine-in service or were only takeout i don't think it even occurred to me that they would have been closed all this time and not open at all but still it was all right i got to uh, check out the picture book guest house, the Watana Village Resort, and then uh, this Pad Thai coffee shop, which was, uh, yeah, it was really nice too. So all in all, not a bad morning. And I think I'll end the video there. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. The other wrinkle, by the way, is that here in Thailand and in Mesot in particular, we're still in a kind of lockdown. I don't know all the rules and restrictions for this lockdown beyond the, the obvious ones that we always uh, face. So I'm not entirely sure the Foresta Cafe and Hangout will be open, but it looks to be kind of permanently closed.